if someone knows that they want 360, then that's going to be added to the system soon in the new year. But for now, you can email us. 360 is quoted. So you have to send us the image that you want made 360. If you've got different sides, it'll help with accuracy. Email us, we'll give you a quote, we'll give you a time because it does take longer than 180. In this case here, the exercise is to do this image for person. So in this case here, it's a 360 file. We look at it for you. You'll see that it actually has the back structured as well. With this file here, some people will actually have 360 model. When they get the file back, they're like, but it's 180, it's not 360. And that's because what they've done is they've clicked on go here. Sure enough, they're seeing that the back is missing. And that's because they were in projection mode. So what does projection do again? It by default, or in this case, they're in portrait mode, but even if it's projection by default, it's shooting the point from the front. So you can do two things. X-ray is good for objects. If you had like an engine or a motor or a ball, that's X-ray. X-ray will apply the same number of layers and points from all directions. So if you click on X-ray, you have three options here. Directional, it'll look best from the direction you choose. So if I choose front, it'll look best from the front. If I choose left, it'll look best from the left. Yeah, let's say you had a ship or a boat and you had positioned that boat in the crystal so that the front of the boat was facing the, the right-hand side, then you would probably want to shoot this from the right-hand side. In this case here, we're going to shoot it from the front. By the way, what does multi-project or surface normal mean? Multi-project is essentially it's going to project it from three different sides by an algorithm. So you're not going to choose that. Multi-project is going to do it from either the left to right, either the top to bottom, either front or back, and create a 360 point cloud of this model in the best form that it can. So you can try and we'll actually try it right now and see the difference. And finally, surface normal. So surface normal is, as you know, there's hundreds of polygons that are creating this model. What if we could actually have each polygon have a point created from its own angle? And that's what surface normal does. So we're gonna do directional first. Careful over here, it is more than likely gonna crash because your depth factor is quite tight. Also, you've got your point space settings. So remember, you're shooting point now from all different angles. So it's gonna be a lot more saturated. So when you're doing 180, your 0707 is okay. But when you're doing 360, you might have to do 0710 or 0712, okay? So I'm just gonna change it to 0710, just to be safe. My number of layers is gonna be under X-ray. I'm gonna maybe go four layers again, because I have so many points coming from different angles. I don't need to have that many layers. People ask what dead factor, kind of the secret sauce. The dead factor is the lower the dead factor, you go up to one, it works in conjunction with the layers. So this setting here, the Z layer distance, dead factor works in conjunction with that. So if, for example, you brought your layers up, but you brought your Z factor down, it'll work together to try and increase the space in a way whereby it's not as obvious brought your Z factor down. If you bring your Z layers down, do you compress your layers tight together and you bring your Z factor down, what's gonna happen is, is that it's going to be so super tight that you're gonna increase the probability of it cracking. So I like to just by general rule, keep my Z factor at two. That's what I like to do. And then I'll just play around with my Z layer. On, uh, on X-ray I'm talking about. On your regular 180, as you've seen the video before, 070752. 07XY, 07Z, eight layers, Z factor five, diffusion of two. Okay, and here's diffusion of one, diffusion of two. 07XY, 07Z, eight layers, Z factor five, diffusion of two, when you're doing one eight. As I said, 07, you might want to increase that if you're using a laser that tends to crack with your Z at 07. Oh, and what's diffusion? Diffusion is just a, just keep it at you. But basically, you know, sometimes when you have a super white face, you can see the rings on the forehead. So you can actually diffuse that. So we just keep it at two by default. So let me click on, so let me just again check here. I have X-ray drive, four, two, two, save. You can play with it. Use a damaged crystal and play with it and see how does it turn out. Now you see the problem with this is what did I tell you? Is I said that it's gonna apply the same layers and points from all directions. My issue with this is that when I'm looking at it from the front, the back is interrupting it. For those that are 360 experts on this call today, you are rendering the back differently than the front, than the side, right? And so you're using third-party softwares to do that. This was created to be simple. It was made for a simple laser operator to use, not for someone that you have to hire at a high wage who's an expert in that field to do it. So right now we have not created on X-ray this functionality of adding lights and changing the different uh, renders of different perspectives. We've made it very, very 
simple, but we have an interesting workaround, which I'll show you at the end. First, I'm going to just take the X-ray and we're going to try multi-project. So let's see, what did multi-project look like? So you might say that this looked a little better. It's projected a little differently. I could see that it thinned out the cloak a little. And let's try surface normal. This is the one where it's going to shoot point in the direction of every polygon. For I'm going to tell you that if this was a motor, an object, I would have been happy. But when it's a person, I'm not happy with using X-ray and I wouldn't use X-ray. I would actually use the workaround, which I'm going to show you momentarily how to do. Instead of X-ray, what I would do with this is I would actually use projection. You know, when you use projection, by default, you always have your front enabled. But guess what? You can actually go here and enable your back as well. Okay, click on enable. And here I can now actually choose the amount of layers. So I'm gonna choose just one layer and keep your fill solid off. I'll show you that at the last um, uh, last bit of, of training here, but keep that off right now and click on okay. And now watch this. I wanna snap this to front view so I can click down here to do that. And let's click on go and watch what happens. Isn't that beautiful? So now you've got your super clear front. The back isn't interrupting it, yet it's still there because it's only one light layer. By the way, I mentioned about Chill Solid. What is Chill Solid? Chill Solid is native. So if you remember, for those of you that have been around in this industry as long as I have, you'll remember that originally you couldn't do texture on your 360s. It was just plain white. So you can still do that if you have a model that doesn't have texture or your client has given you something. Just click on Chill Solid. And in that case, it's going to actually make it just plain white. I just don't want to crash my system with too many points. I'm just going to well, go here and just make it plain white, which is pointless for this. But if you had a model that didn't have texture, again, like a motor or something, then this would be ideal for that. People do ask, how can I edit and delete parts of this model? So when you are in fiend mode, you cannot. It's all disabled here. But when you're in point cloud mode, these here become enabled. So now all of a sudden, look, I don't want this white platform. I don't even like the look of it. But beyond that is that, again, I'm increasing the probability of cracking, especially when I'm doing 360. So I'm going to use this tool. And I'm going to cut that out. This particular customer wanted their crystal done as a 100 by 200 by 100. Click on over shade. The problem is it's too small, so I can just size it. Just make sure that you don't resize the point cloud. So let's say I had saved that point cloud and then I had realized that, oh, it's the wrong size. Don't open the point cloud. Don't open that CBF, CAD, DXF, RMD, HD, BRD, PKBR file and resize it. Once you've saved the point cloud, don't touch it. It's safe. If you touch it, you're either going to cause cracking or you're going to make it look inferior. Never change the size of a point cloud. Change the scene file. So here, this is the scene. I'm going to change this. Make it larger. I know that she wants inscription. So now I keep some space for the inscription. Oh, actually the inscription at the left. Now we're doing projection, eight slides two, back. Good, click on okay, click on go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on left. I'm gonna click on the last zone. And I'm going to click on this here to hide those points and it's gone. Now she also wants inscription added. So if I go back to theme, it's going to have this here. So what I do is I add this layer, the completed layer of what I like to my project. So it's going to add the point cloud here. This is really interesting now. Not that there. What I can do is I can come here to this view and I can make my theme invisible. So I'm just going to double click it. And now I've got my point cloud here. So now I can work with this point cloud again. Don't resize this point cloud, okay? But she wants text. I don't have the font that she wants here, so I actually asked her to send me an image file. I'm just gonna bring it into cockpit. Okay, so this is the text that she wants. So what I would do is I would, first of all, invert this in Photoshop, so then that way the text is actually white, the background is black. And then what I would do is, you see there's a crop tool here, so I'm just gonna get rid of whatever's not necessary. And by the way, whatever you're seeing as white right now, after I invert it, it would have been black that I'm not sharing my Photoshop screen. And so you can't see it. So it would be something like that there. 
And so you can actually easily start importing 2Ds as well. And of course, remember where you want to put it. In this case, I'm just going to put it here, I guess. So now you've got your 360 of the person already done. You just click on go and it'll do the, the check projection, 852 that's fine. We don't want back on. Don't forget to turn it off, by the way, because when you do your next project, it will remember what your last saving was. It will start doing the wrong settings for your other projects. So make sure that you update that. Okay, and then you can save this by clicking here and in whatever file format that you need. That's it. Thank you for being part of it. Thank you for all of your support. It really means the world. The feedback that you send us motivates us to continue developing. Take care.